Recently, I was contacted by Reolink, who make uh, CCTV cameras and, well, I think they just make CCTV cameras and CCTV networking, things like that. Having previously fitted a Reolink CCTV camera system for a friend, I was quite happy to say yes because I already knew that it was actually good quality kit and they sell a good product. My original reason for choosing Reolink to install for my friend at the time was they were the only manufacturer at the time that had a CCTV system with audio and you could actually listen to the audio from the camera uh, on your app and uh, on your monitor system he has a kennel and he wanted to be able to hear if the dogs were barking or not so obviously a CCTV system with audio was necessary so he could hear and see his dogs. The kit they have sent me is a 4 camera, 4K uh, network video recorder, power over ethernet. Power over ethernet just means there's one wire to run. I think it's this box of bits. In there is the network video recorder. You'll see it all when we go install it, but I thought I would just show you quickly. Power, power over Ethernet means there's just network cable to run. Uh, these are 18 meter lengths to send you, but the maximum length you can run is 300 odd feet of network cable to the cameras. They are just nice, uh, bullet-esque, bullet kind of, you know, not massive, just a nice little... Nice little camera, bright white so um, scumbags can see it and as I say they've got a microphone in them so you can also hear the scumbags as well as see them in glorious 4K. We're going to take this kit to my brother's house and install it there as I've already got a power over ethernet CCTV setup set up so it would be kind of unfair to show setting up with the, ca the, the wires already run etc. So we'll do a brand new setup, running wires, drilling holes, going up ladders and installing these and setting up the network video recorder. And so we'll go and do that now. And once we've done the DIY, if you want to hang about and listen to me waffle on at the end of the video, please do so. But for now, let's throw this in the back of the pickup and go to my brother's house. Right. Let us empty the box. You're going to be my assistant. You go two. Two boxes, I know. Two smaller boxes and a large box. Now. <laughs> Oops. I forget. Oh, everyone. Yeah, that's oh. why you broke it. Yes, All right. You broke the handle. So, that one is just the. In the, the buried bit in the network video recorder to get hard way. HDMI cable and hopefully a power supply. Why is it in there? Electricity. Why is it in there? It is a power supply and a network cable and a mouse. Fine, lovely. Right, I don't need that bit. Keep that for later. Dun, 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 dun. Now you're just gonna figure out how we could use Network cable. Network cable. Instructions. Network cable. Network cable. Waterproof glands. <laughs> and four cameras. Put these bad boys up in. So the often overlooked aspect of this installation is where and what you're going to cover. We want a camera going this way, one going this way, one going that way. So we're going to put all three of them right there because that gives us then access to the eave space that we can run wires to and run them to the network video recorder. So obviously this is up high and you will need a ladder. In order to facilitate ease of installation, 
uh, real link have provided these uh, templates, which you can just, well, draw the templates, you put them up and then drill your holes here rather than trying to struggle holding a CCTV camera up there and drilling round it through it. So, they've got to think of your templates, which is a really good idea and uh, that'll help. Okay, here we have a ladder and my brother's going to climb the ladder with a drill to make, well, holes for the templates. Go on then. Do something like that three times. No, they're not even. No, they're not sticky. Well, then again, you have to peel them back off. One there. One there. One there. It's nice having someone else do the work for a change and just get to stand and watch. This is this is I ain't got on board with this. Okay, we have discovered an important, uh, not a flaw, but an observation we've made. The template doesn't have a match for the cutout. So if you were to drill all your holes, and then you obviously, you want your cable to the bottom so water does not run up, or they don't want the water going that and run into your thing, so you want it at the bottom. But there's no mark on the template for our cables to come out, so we'll have to make our own mark on a template with a pen or a pencil or something. And then I'm going to go and check and make sure the cameras have got that cut out in the same location in all of them. Huh. Look at him, using tools. Science. So, uh, do they match? I would expect them all to be in the same place, yeah, okay. So, they're all in the same place, which is a start. So now you can check to see if your holes are anywhere where you want them to be. Oh, that's a good start. <laughs> Stick it there. Straight out of the box, yes. We have yet to find a manufacturer that sends decent screws. Uh, so, you can use these, but I'd substitute your own screws, because they're usually rubbish. Right. What are we on stage B and set of screws? Stage B and set Have your assistant stand here and get ready to catch the camera <laughs> when it falls out the sky. <laughs> One! Suppose technically you don't have to pre-drill if you're drilling at something soft like yeah. pine or something like you could just put it on self tapper your way into. Okay, three cameras. And that was the easy part. <coughs> Putting them up, easy peasy. Now it's time to make holes and poke wires. Right. Right, drill and appropriate size. Are we going for 22 mil? 22, because that fits the ends of the right, things so through. End of the wall. The end of the wall. Plus. The first joist. Plus a bit. Then it should be. Somewhere about there. second joist a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't hit joist. Right. Fabric cobble the ends of our network cables with the waterproof gland thing to open them. End piece over the end, and then the split for that bit. That'll give us that into there, and then slide that and that bit. Right, I'm just gonna. It's just a dumb question. No. Right, that works. So that screws in there, makes a waterproof thing. Ah, you clip that in the cable yeah. and then squidge all together. Right, right. so. <gasps> right, so. Uh. O ring? What on the end of that? Oh, someone's already put one on it. Oh, that was easy. Put O ring on end and then unfine clip. So it's a nice thing. And then poke that one there. And then slide 
all of that up. that down. And low. Waterproof connection. Yep. And then poke it all in the hole. Okay. Sounds good. Now play the exciting game of unfankle your network cables before you start. Womp womp womp. Doo -doo -doo. Shada! Right, unfangled. Right, so our plan here is to tape them together and then tape it to our pokey stick. Put all three together in some fashion. Are you ready to receive cable? Oh, like a glove. That's it. She's all yours. Okay. Stage one, enter your confined space. Hi, welcome to the inside of the loft. <laughs> oh. Obviously a sensible person would put their network video recorder somewhere ask accessible, but this is real life DIY. This is what happens in real life when people have to poke wires into their attic and serve them up and then run long lengths of cable. I will now pass my camera to my brother, who's going to have to scooch up behind me. Yes. Right, let me get this light out of my face. Oh my God. So, there's not a lot to this network video recorder. There's electricity. Electricity goes in there. I've not turned on yet. And then the power brick can go and sit there and just plug into the wall. Plug in the wall, like that. And then it is a matter of taking your... They're still taped together. That's amateur hour. This is going to be the longest part of getting this bit of tape on. Bit of tape. Take your however many cameras you've managed to install. Pick whatever holes you want. One. Two. Three, except I've gone one, three, five. So let's make it one, because it'll look weird on screen. Two, three, that's camera in. Right, there's also the LAN port, which has to go to a network cable to your router, so it gives it the internet. I'll plug ours in once I drag it in here. And then you'll need an HDMI out to a screen so you can set up. But obviously, once it's all set up, then you can just use the app or the PC software to control it all and set it up. But, for the time being, we will need a wireless mouse, not a wireless mouse, a wired mouse, plugged into it. One of us will be in the loft and one of us will be looking at the screen. But, let's turn it on. Oh, made noises. Got a red light in the, in the side. Let's make it. I'm just waiting for the camera lights to light up. There they go. Three cameras, all flashing. Wait for them to switch in. Oh, no, this says, oh, it's only got one light. Oh. I'm used to my other network, which gives you, it's got an, an on light and an activity light, but these are all active. So, that is on and running. We'll now plug in the network and the HDMI, and we'll go and look at the screen with the cameras. So there is a bit I have missed out, in which the it's the initial screen for the CCTV camera when it's plugged into your television or your monitor, but it's literally just like, five screens of pressing next and there's a bit where uh, it asks you to like pick a username and a password and I just pick the easiest username and password uh, you can get or you can type in on screen just to get us past that bit so that you can then go and use the app and then do all the interesting things uh, like on your phone and not sitting in the attic uh, on a screen uh, Hello Yes uh, Terms conditions Yes Agree Okay, so click on that, enter username and password. Because the app is already, because we're on our Wi-Fi network, on the same network, it's already gone and found all of the cameras. It's already connected to the network video recorder, I don't have to do anything. So I'm going to go away where you put in your password. All right, 
and then log in. And no, no, don't save it. That's fine. There you go. I've got one camera. Sadly, you have to go and log in all the cameras. I think if you swipe right, does it swipe along the next one? No, left, right, no. no? Oh, go back then. And you need no. to go to the next one along, which is also camera one, which is really confusing. All the cameras have been given the same name. Well, it's logged into them all, that's fine. So if you double tap on your, that picture, double tap on that, no. and then you can rotate your phone sided ways, and that'll bring up a thing, I think. You can double tap on them again to make them full size, yeah. There's also an option in the menus for turning on the audio. But yeah, so now we can go outside and point them. Is it just because we've not beaten the third camera yet? Is that why it's not? Mm -hmm. Aye. So, scroll along out and click on the third camera. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, so we've got all the cameras now. And as you saw, we didn't have to go in and fuck about with any network settings because we're on our own network, we found them. Granted, we'll have to do a bit of fiddling to get the out once we're outside the network, but that's, I think that's just a matter of making a real link account and it'll stream and do everything for us. But that's the easiest network setup I've ever done. Literally, plug the network video recorder <laughs> into the router and then join the Wi-Fi and it did everything else. Yeah, okay, let's go and set these up. So, we have the cameras pointed where they're supposed to be. Here, using the app, you just stand outside and look at it and point them where you want to go. You got the camera things going? Oh, can't see from my bloody sunglasses. Uh, yes. Just about that. There's that one. There's loading the stream. But it's it's because we're outside one far away from the Wi-Fi. Yeah, that looks good. And mm -hmm. glorious 4K. Right, and we've got one more camera to put up, but apart from that, it's pretty much done. They are all up, and we'll obviously tidy up all the wires and then silk up the hole to stop the birds and the bees getting in. And then calling it done. Oh yeah, get it right in there, that's it. In deep. <laughs> well, that has installed our four cameras now. And I have to say, this uh, Real Link app is really nice. It works well flawlessly. And of course, being Real Link, we get audio. If you can hear that, your small children playing in the garden. But yeah, okay, that's impressive. So one thing which I've, I well, not struggled with, but on all the other CCTV set above hand is what happens when you're not on your own Wi-Fi. So with the real link one, once you're not on your Wi-Fi, there's nothing to sign into. So you don't have to put in any details or anything. It just automatically starts working over the over the, the network, the mobile phone network, your 3G or 4G. Albeit a lower quality, but turn the volume off. It still works. It still absolutely works. Over 4G, 3G, no settings to enter. Didn't have to play about with anything. Didn't have to tell it anything. So with that, in that aspect, I am thoroughly impressed and would recommend a real link to anyone. Obviously, yes, there are all the My fingers stop working. Hello. No, it's because I'm not on the Wi-Fi anymore. One, one moment, please. So we'll still have to set up all the motion detection because, you know, it does all the people detection, vehicle detection, all that kind of stuff. But that, I think, will be a video for another day on actually setting up the software side of it. Because at the moment, to get viewing images, you just basically plug in all your cameras, plug the internet, into the back of the network video recorder and then download the app on your phone and turn it on. There's a stage where you have to pick a username and a password on the network video recorder and you do that you know, on the screen that you've got plugged in the network video recorder. But once you've got that username and password, you just bang them in the app and that's you. You've got all control over everything it does 
from the app on your phone, which is tremendous. Well, if you have made it to the end of this video, thank you very much for staying till the end and uh, watching it all. Uh, I just want to say a little bit about the Real Link kit. I was thoroughly impressed by the ease of connectivity. I mean, I we right, putting the cameras up, that's fairly easy. If you can work a screwdriver and a drill, you can install the cameras and poke the wires in. The, bar, the part I was most impressed was, you basically plug the cameras into the network box, put an ethernet cable in, connect to your router that provides it with internet. The part that I didn't show on screen is, you've plugged your television into the network video recorder, you've got your mouse, you literally press next like six times and ask you, what time zone you live in, blah blah blah, and do you submit to all our terms and conditions? Yes, great. There's a bit where I ask you for a username and a password, the username's admin, and then you get to pick a password, you just pick a password, obviously pick a password, and once you've done all that, you can just leave it. Go, get your phone, install the Real Link app, assuming you are on the same network, you know, you're connected to your Wi-Fi, you're on the same network, and it goes and it goes and it finds the network video recorder on the network and you just put your username and your password in and it does all the cameras. It's the easiest setup I've had to do. I didn't have to go and find my IP address and try and log in via the IP address and all those other things with all my with my old networking setup. It was, it just ugh, I hate to use the Apple term, but it just worked. It was it was just nice. It was nice to have something that did the thing. And it's nice that the real link kit isn't shit. And I knew this from beforehand from installing it previously that it wasn't a piece of garbage and it's expensive granted. It is an expensive kit, I will give you that. But it's the old thing of you kind of getting what you pay for. It's if you want the cheapy cheap budget stuff, you'll end up with the cheap cheapy budget app as well to go with it that does some things and it works okay-ish but it's not great but the real link kit it does all the things it really is is that good yeah i'll i will well if there's enough interest i will make a follow-up video if you want where we'll go through and set the motion settings and you know you can actually draw on the image where you don't want the motion to be triggered from etc i think there's even a bit you can black out video entirely so it doesn't record any of that data for all the people who have privacy concerns of filming their neighbours. So there's the legality of filming public spaces. People are like, ah, oh, you, you, you can't film that, that's public space. No, you can, because you're not specifically filming public. If you're specifically filming a public place, yes, that's probably against the law and you'll get in trouble or get told to point your camera somewhere. But if your focus is on your private ground, but in the background happens to be a public space you're not you're not focused on the public space you're focused mainly on your own private land and that's where you're allowed to film that bit because you're not filming the public directly they just happen to be in the background of any um, motion triggers or anything like that anything like that no doubt we will have the usual comment from the one person that always comes on and goes, Oh, but my real link camera failed after one day and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but there's like a hundred other thousand people that haven't told anyone that they've got a real link system installed and it's working flawlessly. Because that always happens. People always complain, but they don't come and say, Oh yeah, I've got a real link kit and it's working fabulously and I have no problems with it. Which is the majority of the time it's, you know, but you always hear the most from the people that have a problem with the thing you don't hear from the people that it works fine for. Thank you once again dear viewer for sticking with me and listening to me waffle and drivel on about things etc and for watching these videos because the more you watch the more things we get sent and the ad revenue that generates things so we can buy more trash to take apart and play with and so on and so forth. As always, thanks for watching.